Hello and welcome to our first Paint to Learn. Today we're going to be doing the Octopus Life Cycle. We're going to be creating this image and learning all about the life cycle as we work. To complete this image, you're going to need a few different supplies. First of all, you'll need a sheet of watercolour paper, a normal drawing pencil, a jar of clean water, some different sized paint brushes. Here's a large one, a medium, and a fine point for details. And of course, a selection of watercolor paints. This is my palette, but you can use whatever you have on hand. Okay, let's begin. First of all, we're going to sketch out the shapes for our image. I'm gonna start by drawing a rocky outcrop here. You can make these shapes quite random and use your pencil very lightly. Below the rocks, we're gonna draw on our ocean floor level. And now we're gonna block in where our octopus is going to go. I'm gonna start by sketching the oval shape for the mantle, adding in where the siphon will be, and the octopus's eye. Next, we're going to add in those wonderful arms. Some are gonna come in front of the rocks, Again, simply just sketch them into natural shapes. You can go back over any lines that you feel need to add more detail or depth. I'm going to put one in the back here. Obviously, for our adult octopus, we're going to want to include all eight arms in the image to create an accurate diagram. We're going to add some over this side that are going down behind the rocks. And then another one wrapping around here. You want to make sure that all the arms are coming from the front of the mantle so that that rests out over the back. We can have some of our arms extending out into the water reaching freely. We need to make sure we add in the webbing between any of the arms that we can see connected. And then we're gonna add in the final two arms at the back here. As you can see, just lightly sketch as you go and build up lines where you feel you need to see them a bit more clearly. I'm now just adding some texture to the top of the mantle as the octopuses can change the shape of their skin when they want to camouflage. So we're going to give it a rocky texture to the top. positioning and the shape of your octopus you're going to want to grab a soft rubber and just take out any of the lines where your octopus has overlapped the rock work I'm just going back in and darkening up the outline of the rocks and next we're going to sketch in the caves So again, these can be very random in any shapes you like. You can experiment to see what looks best on your own rock work. I'm going to add a column in here just to break it up so it's not as dark when we paint it in. Now it's time to work on those wonderful octopus eggs. Octopuses lay eggs usually in long strings. So to start with, I'm sketching out a few lines and then I'm going to add the oval shapes attached to them as we go along. 
each of these little ovals is an individual egg. Add some eggs into your caves and just let them hang and trail. Now I'm going to sketch in a freshly hatched little octopus. Again, I'm starting with the oval for the mantle and then adding on the very thin legs. Once I've got the size of this one in, I'm going to draw a half emerged octopus from another set of eggs. So now these eggs I'm going to get slightly larger towards the end. And then I'm going to add the mantle of a new octopus emerging just here. Next, I'm just going to rub out a little bit of the rock work and the ocean floor over here where I'm going to draw in our juvenile octopus. So just as with the adult, I'm going to start with adding in the mantle. A young octopus is basically just a miniature version of the adult form. So once I've got the mantle, I'm going to start adding in all its legs. Adding the legs curled underneath the octopus is great at this point because we're going to see it in a different position, resting on the ocean floor, as opposed to the adult clinging onto the top of the rockwork. I'm going to draw in the siphon here and then just keep building up, adding more legs as we go. When you're happy with the positioning of all your different octopuses, it's time for us to start adding colour. I'm going to begin with the ocean floor and I'm using a tiger's eye colour or yellow ochre with some slight brown added to it. This will create a lovely texture on the ocean floor. I add the paint along the floor line that we drew in earlier and then just use water to pull the paint further down and to create some different textures. Next for the rock work, I'm going to use a granulating grey. If you don't have any granulating colours, simply use a light grey and then add in some touches of brown and yellow to the paint while it's still wet to create the different effects. Again, remember to use lots of water as this will help the rocks look more natural. Carefully paint around all the octopus's legs and block in the colour. Adding some more darker areas of colour will create more of a rocky texture to the paintwork. Mm -hmm. 
once dry, we're going to go in and paint the interior of the caves. I'm going to start by using a dark grey colour and block this all in. Going around the eggs is going to be quite tricky, so take your time and use lots of water to keep the paint wet. Once I have the grey blocked in, I'm going to add small amounts of the same colours that I used for the upper rock work, those browns and lighter greys, just to bring it all together. Now for the ocean background, I'm going to use a light blue. You can also add tones of green and I'm going to start by just putting down some different areas of colour with the paint and then I'm going to use the water to blend it all together and move it around the page. This means that there will be areas of colour that are deeper and areas that are paler and this will create more of an idea of the water moving. Before the water's dried I'm going to go back in and add some speckles to create some bubble effects in the water and I'm just using the exact same colours and a slightly darker tone of blue and just dropping it into the wet paint which will allow it to flow within the image. To finish up our background, we're just going to go back into the rock work using a darker shade and painting it underneath where the octopus sits and underneath its legs to create some shade. Now let's move on to our eggs. Octopuses lay their eggs in these long strands that often look a bit like pearly white grapes. They can lay anywhere between 20,000 and 80,000 eggs. We're going to paint these eggs using a very pale blue adding colour primarily to the bottom and right hand side of each egg to create more of a 3D effect. The octopuses featured in this image are based on the giant Pacific octopus, which will reach maturity at around two years old. Females will seek out a mate and then carry their fertilised eggs for around six months before laying them in a cave, which they will then guard for the rest of their lives. The eggs will hatch after anywhere from five months to up to four years, and out comes these tiny, minuscule octopus babies. These tiny baby octopus are known as larva, and they're virtually translucent. As they grow and develop, they turn into fry and then hatchlings. We're going to paint them in using a pale pink and then adding a little bit of blue to create that effect. From the thousands of octopus that will hatch, only one or two will survive to adulthood. Because the fry are translucent, you can see their organs and hearts beating through their pale skin. We can achieve this effect by adding the small amount of blue into the wet paint that we've already added. Once dry, we're going to go in with a little bit of more blue paint just to add some more definition to the babies. Adding in some simple dots to represent their tiny eyes and siphons. We can then use our brush with just water on it to soften out some of those edges that we've put in and blend the colours together. Next we're going to move on to adding colour to our young octopus. Octopuses are amazing at camouflage and can change not only the colour and pattern on their skin but also its texture. For this reason any colours you choose to paint your octopus would be accurate. For these images I've opted to go for the orange shades that are most often seen on the giant Pacific octopus when it's at rest. For this youngster, I'm starting by painting the whole creature pink to show the transition from the translucent larvae to the more adult textures of the skin. Now 
now I'm going to go in with the orange and just drop this into the wet paint that's already there and allow it to create its own shapes and textures as it moves. This is the beauty of watercolour. An octopus of this size will spend the next two to three years growing to its full adult size. When they first emerge, the tiny larvae are about the size of your little fingernail. And over the next few years, they can grow to about 20 metres in length. Using a red paint, I'm going to go in and just add a little bit more detail and depth to create some definition on our image. This is very watered down and you can use your brush with just water on, again, to blend it in further. This allows us to distinguish where the siphon is and where the different legs overlap. When adding detail to the legs, paint just on one side of the leg. And this will also help create some depth and shade. Now, of course, our juvenile octopus is a tiny miniature replica of the adult, so we need to paint in those suckers. At this point, I'm using the red and pushing in the tiny little dots along the underside of each of the arms. And to finish off our baby, I'm going to draw in the eye using a black marker pen. And now it's time to bring our adult to life. This is an adult female and we're going to paint her using the beautiful tiger's eye colour that I used on the ocean floor. If you don't have such a colour, go with a yellow ochre and add in some bits of brown. Use lots of water to keep the paint very wet as we're going to add some different colours in to create a lot of texture onto her mantle here. I'm now going to drop in some orange paint on top of the wet that we already have to create some different shades and tones in the texture. This mother octopus is perched on top of the cave where she's laid her eggs and here she will remain for the whole duration it takes for them to hatch. She will not eat and during that time the colour of her body will fade so it's perfectly okay for your adult octopus to come out a much paler shade than the juvenile you've just painted. The mother will guard the eggs from predators and keep them safe. But once the babies have hatched and swum away, she will die. And this is the end of the octopus life cycle. I'm adding the paint to the legs in the same way as I did for the mantle, starting with the yellows and browns and then dropping in some oranges afterwards. Trying to concentrate the colours to either side of the legs to create a more 3D effect. Don't be afraid to turn your page round if you need to, to make easier access for the different parts of the painting that you're working on. Filling in the legs on this side of the rocks as well, in the exact same way. Finally, just before I leave this to dry, I'm going to pop in some drops of colour again on the mantle just to create some more texture. And now we're ready for the finishing touches. So again, using the marker pen, I'm going to draw in the eye. I'm going to put an outline around the edge of where the eye is and draw in the pupil. 
Octopuses always have a horizontal pupil, so no matter which way up they are, the eye should always be level with the seafloor below. Next, I'm going to use um, a red shade just to draw a few little outlines and definition to the webbing and the siphon. Now let's draw in these suckers. The underside of each octopus arm has two rows of these small suckers. I'm drawing in two rows on this one so you can see that nice and clearly. The octopus suckers are amazing. They can lift up to 35 pounds of weight, open clamshells, and the octopus can even use them to taste. And if you happen to meet an octopus, they're capable of leaving bruises on human skin. On the arms down here, I'm going to add a single row of suckers along, just to show that the legs are in different positions and from different ones we can see different amounts. Each octopus arm has its own neuron brain controlling it, so the octopus can use all of its arms independently. I'm going to depict the double row again over here. The suckers are larger towards the body and become smaller towards the tip of each tentacle. And if needed, use the same dark red colour to add some more definition in to wherever the legs overlap just so you can clearly distinguish each arm from another. And there we have our finished octopus life cycle diagram. I hope you've really enjoyed it today and I'd love to know what the favourite octopus fact you've learned is. See you next time. Bye!